and everyone who is part of our meeting um, this morning. Um, let me greet you. Ekameni, Nkosi Amedi, Chandas, and Sid Amen. Honorable members, um, we're meeting today after the minister had pronounced to South Africa that the bill for expropriation, that is Bill 2020, has been submitted to the parliament. I think as this committee, we are going to have a role to play as previously it was given to this committee to do the, process, the processing of the bill, to lead in the public hearings and all that. I think we must be prepared so that when it lands in our hands, we hit the ground running because the president said he wanted to see that bill before the end of this year be made an act. Uh, I don't know whether that is possible, but we have to be prepared as this committee to hit the ground running. We're still waiting for the parliament to appoint the committee that is going to deal with it, but we must, the bill is out there, gazetted, we must read, we must do research and check how is it different from the one that was rejected in the parliament in 2018. But when we deal with it, at least we see what are the differences. Uh, last weekend, we were in KZN uh, doing our oversight uh, on the border of uh, South Africa and Mozambique because the border, the border, the border uh, uh, so today we had requested um, the department to brief us on all these things. Um, so our briefing is coming at a relevant time, having gone to Bait Bridge, having gone to Kose Bay. So I think our our briefing for today will really uh, ask us. But with these few words, uh, um, let's not say that. I will deal with that when we are we have been present with, with the documents. Um, with these few words, I welcome all of you in this meeting. Uh, I know that as we usually do, we will engage uh, progressively, ensuring that whatever that we have will be for benefit of the South Africans. Um, Ms. Martini, is there any apologies that we have? Thank you, Chair. Yes, we do have apologies. Uh, one from the Honorable Van Staden. He will not be able to attend this meeting. And also, we've got another apologies from the Minister of Public Works and Infrastructure. I think she's attending cabinet meeting this morning, and the DM is here um, on her behalf. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Uh, is also won't be joining us. Uh, they have a program in her constituents where the the district the district delivery model will be uh, launched. So they are busy there with the minister of culture and the minister in the presidency. So she won't be joining us. Uh, Honorable Michelle is struggling to get in. Uh, if there is anyone who can assist, I don't know whether it's the, it is the network or the challenges that we currently are having. So anyone who can assist, please assist. But then I will hand over to you, DM. Thank you, thank you, uh, uh, Chairperson. And uh, good morning to the honorable members. Um, to officials uh, present, both from the portfolio committee and from the department, uh, those uh, led by the acting DG in the department and uh, Nola in the committee. Uh, allow me, Chair, to uh, first wish um, the, the honorable member um, Madeline, a, a 
speedy recovery. I can see uh, the pain she's in and, and I can feel it. Um, but also allow me to, we, we're meeting after, after quite some time uh, post uh, the break. Allow me to also note uh, and uh, send condolences to those uh, families of members that we lost uh, during this uh, time. And also appeal to all of us to continue observing the um, regulations. Um, COVID, we may be at level one, but COVID is still with us. Uh, having said that, uh, Chairperson, um, we, we're here to present about our borders, which I think everybody uh, is aware of the fact that currently they are not in the state at which they should be. They are described as being porous um, and we need to work harder to attend to the challenges. Um, understanding that most of our inland borders um, are, uh, we are neighboring um, SADC countries with whom we share a lot, especially with respect to both um, social and uh, economic development. But uh, also uh, we as a department are responsible to ensure that uh, the, the infrastructure needs of the Department of uh, uh, DOD's uh, Department of Defense as the ones that are responsible for the, the, up, the, the safety for securing our borders, uh, the, the, the kind of infrastructure that we provide them with is, the, is what they need. Uh, and therefore us working together and closely with the Department of Defense, but also with the other departments such as Home Affairs, because those departments also get affected by um, what happens in, the, in our borders. Home Affairs, as well as uh, police, um, as well as um, Department of International Relations, um, all those departments matter in, in ensuring that we, our borders um, are safe, our borders, our people uh, inside our country uh, are secured. Uh, but the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure remains responsible for providing such uh, infrastructure. And we are talking about a borderline uh, of approximately 1,800 plus close to 2,000 uh, kilometer uh, um, zone. So we, 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 we are here to share with the committee uh, the kind of thinking that the department has and the kind of uh, plans that we're looking into. But the, the, the acting DG is here uh, together with uh, his team. They will be presenting to us uh, that, uh, uh, making to us that presentation. I will, with your permission, Chairperson, uh, allow um, Intias um, to, to, to as, as the leader of the team, to proceed with the presentation. Thank you for the opportunity, Chairperson. Thank you, honorable members. Okay. Uh, over to you, Intias. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Minister, and good morning to the chairperson and honorable members. Thank you very much. Chairperson, with your permission, I'll provide some of the background. Recently, uh, we've had the uh, PMA uh, established after the president ascended to the uh, legislation giving rise to the creation of the Border Management Authority. Uh, this uh, PMA or Border Management Authority, uh, what it does is it gives rise to the the establishment of an integrated border law enforcement agency that includes the functions of the SEPs, the DTI, the Department of Environmental Affairs, uh, as well as uh, in future, the infrastructure functions of public works, 
So the fragmented approach to managing the borders uh, will be consolidated in a single law enforcement agency called the Border Management Authority. That authority is currently being established through uh, an NMOC process or macro organization process where functions are being transferred from several departments into the Border Management Authority. Now, with that background, uh, Chairperson, the Border Management Authority has been functioning in uh, loose terms through a cooperation ag agreement, a multi-party agreement for several years now. And what you've also had is a Border Control Coordinating Committee uh, overseeing the workings of uh, the uh, Border Management Authority in this loose, informal way. Um, and uh, now we have legislation giving our presentation, the one function that was not included in the Border Management Authority is the uh, function for uh, border patrols and uh, protecting the, the borders of the country. The SANDF was able to successfully uh, lobby, if I could use that term, uh, to maintain that function uh, rather than it being integrated into the BNA. And the SANDF on the grounds of the constitutional provisions of maintaining and protecting our territorial integrity and sovereignty. The SENDF maintains a function of uh, securing the borders of the country. And in that regard, with the SENDF being part of the Department of Defense, a client of the National Department of Public Works, we have responsibility in a formal manner for providing the border fences and patrol roads to our client, the Department of Defense, and uh, consequently, the South African Defense Force. With that particular background, an operation referred to as Operation Corona is uh, a project as part of the border management environment uh, focusing on uh, uh, protecting the borders led by the SCNDF and a site clearance process was in there was commissioned, referred to as an integrated site clearance process to look at the fencing and patrol roads along the entire borderline, including servitudes as well as a high-level costing and analysis of best practice uh, to gather some kind of intelligence of the land layout of the entire borderline for the purpose of laying the foundation of some kind of uh, response initiative in setting up border fence and patrol roads going forward. So as a, re a re result, Jefferson, the department registered three separate projects uh, dividing the borderline, the land border, into three different parts and what is called a, a site clearance process, which is essentially a land feasibility study to look at the entire uh, layout of the land on the border and in response to look at the site clearance requirements in order to set up a, an adequate uh, border fence and patrol road infrastructure. And this is what this, present, this presentation is about. Uh, the work uh, hopefully will conclude early next year. And this presentation responds to what the layout is and what the work uh, entails and the kind of progress that has, has been made and what the costs are on a high level estimate for putting together uh, border fences and patrol roads along our entire border. This land feasibility is the first step. It will then be followed by discussions with our client, the SCNDF, as well as National Treasury, the Department of International Relations and others to determine what is required and in terms of uh, understanding client needs and fitting in with the policy requirements of government to ensure that uh, we provide border security within the context of government policy. So, Chairperson, let me hand over to the DDG responsible, the Sasa Suban Real Estate Investment Services. That branch includes a town planning unit. The town planning unit took responsibility for putting together this particular site clearance process, which is a land feasibility study, and she'll take us through the detailed presentation and will conclude with a best practice analysis of what border fences look like um, in terms of uh, achieving the requirement to negate border fence. Let me hand it over to Masuban. Sasa, you can take over. Thank you. Honorable Chair, Honorable Members, good morning. I'm Sasa Subin. I head the Real Estate Investment Services Branch that is also responsible for planning of infrastructure within the Department of Public Works. Um, if the presentation can be flighted or must I flight it? You can carry on and flight it, uh, Sasa. I've made you a co-host. Thank you.
Okay, I think I should find it. Able to visible, uh, is it visible? No, we can't see anything yet. No, if you can just slide it, we can just uh, avoid some this. Technical uh, difficulties here on my system. Maybe I should share it on my side. It's fine. Yeah, please, Nola, let's do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, as indicated, um, that we that, that uh, we're going to be looking at the background of the project, the project status, the estimated timeframes for completion, uh, the proposed conceptual um, uh, 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 diagram, um, some international standards and best practice for borderline fencing. We're gonna look at the financial and budget implications for fencing and patrol roads and the way forward. Um, Chairperson, I'm sharing this presentation with Mr. Malusi Ganiso, um, and he'll take us through and I will, um, come through on slides five and, and six of the presentation. Malusi, can I hand over to you? Uh, thank you, DDG. Uh, all protocol observed. Uh, let me take this opportunity and present. Uh, I'm a, can you hear me? Yes, we yes, can hear you. Can Carry on. Okay. Let me take this opportunity and present and take you through of what we have done as a DPW under the site clearance processes. This presentation will present what is, and then we'll be looking at what could be done, and we'll be looking at what should be done. Those are the three main things we have to look at it when we look at this presentation and the whole project holistically. The, 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 the first thing, if I can give you a background, Internationally, we are required to register a servitude of 100 meters along the borderline. But when we did a, a, a topographical survey in all three borderlines of South Africa, we decided to go for, uh, for 50 meter wild because of the terrain in South Africa. And another challenge that has uh, came to us we have found that most of the farmers along the borderline have encroached up to the borderline or exceeding to the another country. That's what we have discovered. However, we decided to go for 50 meter wild of uh, borderline. The setback from the borderline will register a 50 meter wide servitude of all the borderline in South Africa trying to meet the 100 meters uh, international standard. Um, the problem that we are facing is because since 1994, we have failed as the RSA to look after our borderline. Because of that ignorance, we have brought a big burden in South Africa in terms of socio-economic diaphragm. The second thing that we have to look at it to bring what could be done is to allow a, a proper and effective integrated security system that meets the international standard to define and rectify what is happening on the borderline. The last one, we will be looking at uh, site clearance as it is, where we're looking at what should be done in order to address this issue. The site clearance will be looking at the um, investigation and the compliance of, of all legal frameworks and the legislative frameworks that we are using in South Africa in order to allow this registration of the servitude along, along the borderline and fencing. There are two things that we're looking at at the borderline. We're looking at erecting the proper fencing and uh, to build a patrol road along the borderline. Um, the, 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 there are three projects that we have registered currently. One is uh, RSA, Eswatin, and Mozambique. I think we visited one uh, on the weekend, which is, was 54 kilometer. That is done by the province. They have done a good work. And uh, the other one project that we have registered is the, is the South Africa and RSA, the Bay Bridge one, the, the, the bone of contention. The last one is RSA as Lesotho. Next slide. 
Yes, uh, I think we can testify with the current situation that is happening on our borderline. It's not looking good. We are not safe in terms of, of the um, socially, political, and economically. In terms of war, actually, we are going to be uh, uh, fragile in a way that anything can come to South Africa. We can be bombed. We have nothing at the borderline. That uh, Those pictures are showing exactly what is happening. Those pictures were taken when we visited the site inspection. One of them is, uh, is, uh, is, um, is uh, Mozambique, where you can see people are crossing, and the first thing is down, nothing, actually. If you go to Lesotho and Swaziland, there's nothing, totally nothing on the borderline. There's no fence. And uh, we already have an inquiry from ACRO SA and the Free State SA. And then we currently have a legal case with the ACRO SA, uh, Free State that is running now. The next slide. The, the, then the site clearance has been conducted. Those are the items that we needed to study before in terms of a legal framework and a, and a legislation framework. We have conducted almost 80% to be completed. If it was not a lockdown, we could be talking about 90, 90 to 95%. We could even meet the, 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 the time frame that we're expecting to finish the site clearance by next year. However, to make things, uh, because of the current situation, what is happening on the borderline, we have looked at, uh, at the work that we have done and they look at the mitigations that we could experience in this process. Then we find that we have controlled the risk on this project. Then we have issued a provisional site clearance. Provisional site clearance, it can allow the departments to do planning and design if funding is available. But the, 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 the challenge we will have for now is because I don't think we have the funding for planning and design. That, that's we have to look at that because immediately when we issue all the full site clearances, it means it triggers that for the next two years, you should be started implementing the project. If you don't do that, it means all the study that we have done will lapse. Then it means it will be a fruitless expenditure and useless exercise. Next, uh, next uh, slide. Next slide. Those are the estimated timeframes um, we estimated before COVID-19 and the lockdown. We have been delayed by six, um, six months on this project, but we will try by all means to, to meet the targets that we set there. However, with the unforeseen and the challenges that we may have, one of them is the expropriation we are waiting for the expropriation bill to be approved so that we can expropriate without um, compensation. Because when we did a study, we have found that all the most of the farmers have encroached the borderline. They didn't meet that 100 meter setback along the borderline. Now, most of them, they want us to, they want to be compensated for the registration of the servitude along the borderline. But we're working with them well they agreed with the registration of the servitude. Next slide, please. This is a, this is a, a conceptual and or you can call it a cross section. When we did an investigation, we have noticed that most of the rivers that are, 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 are set in South Africa are used as the borderline. One of them is Limpompo is used as a borderline between South Africa and Mozambique. If you look at this cross section, the, 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 the green part represent the river, the orange part represent the servitude. In this case, we have looked at the 33 meter wide of servitude. We have um, looked at the, uh, we have put the, the fencing, 
That fencing is just the current fencing, for example, in Mozambique, that is there. It's already there since 1994 or before that. Then the existing one is the middle next to the road. That one is the current fencing that we propose that it should be there as a security. That fencing must be an integrated security system. But slide nine, I would dwell a lot. What do I mean when I say integrated security system? Then you will have the patrol road. It will be useless to put a fencing without a proper patrol road. Immediately you put a fence. If there is no patrol people, those people can remove that fence. It doesn't matter whether it's a washing fence. As, you, as we went to Mozambique last week at Kosebe, we saw that fence is the farm fencing, but we call it as a, as a security fencing for South Africa. But if you don't put the proper integrated security system, it's useless. Even this exercise, we have to just to stop. The next slide, please. So, slide nine, the, the annexure. I have put an annexure where I wanted to dwell on it. Sasa? Ah. Yes, uh, uh, Secretary, do you have the annex show? Um, Sasa, I only have what I see in front of me, so I don't know whether the annex is supposed to be attached on which slide. It, it was attached to on the email to the DG. No, I didn't receive any annex, unfortunately. I received the presentation and the apology letter from the minister. Nola, yes. if you can give me some viewing, uh, viewing a bit, uh, sh sharing again. Let me try to put up the slide. You, you do. Uh, let me just stop sharing so that you can take over from your side. Is it visible? Not as yet. Is it visible now? Nothing still? Oh, I don't know. There's a problem on my side. And um, perhaps give me the, the, the rights, then, then I'll project it. This is Heinz. Okay, Heinz, I'll, I'll do this right away. Uh, you'll see I've got two. Um, just uh, use the Heinz two. Okay. I'm done, Heinz, so you can carry on. Oh, that, oh. Okay, th th thanks very much. Um, I'm not going to dwell with the, the methodology and uh, all those things because we'll be doing that in planning and design because it's too technical. But if you look at this slide, this is what we're, pro we're, 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 we're proposing to have on a borderline. But if you can go down, uh, Hans, can you just go through through all the presentation up to the... To the to the to the you can go through go through I will tell you where to stop yeah you can go back on the wall on the wall on a on a barrier back 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 yeah can, yeah what I wanna present we went to KZN on a weekend. Exactly what we have proposed on a site clearance, this is what uh, the, 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 the imitation of the KZ and what they are putting on the eight kilometer road. This is just a concept, but based on this concept, they came up with the contextual plan, which they are presenting on a KZN side to block the cars that have been stolen from the Mangozi on Shabuyalingana community. 
This is what we propose to have on areas where there is a vulnerability, whereby they are stealing cars, and um, we, we cannot put the proper defense in the ordinary fence. We have to put barriers. This is one of the things that we have proposed that on those areas whereby we have the challenges with the stolen of the cars, we can put the, the desert barriers. This is what the concept look like. On our application with the EIA, we have applied 50 kilometers, 54 kilometers, to put Jersey barriers on, on the borderline. The next slide, please. Uh, go through, go, go. Oh, I don't wanna dwell with this because it's a technical thing. This is the fencing that we, we are proposing that we, we, we can put the The main thing is to put gabions. But when we use gabions, we must use the, 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 the natural resource within the area. We should not have uh, um, export things outside the area. We will use the stones that when we are clearing the site, cleaning this, the topsoil, we will use those stones to, to, to do the, 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 the gabions. Next slide. Next slide. You, you can see the gabions there. We are using the stones that we will collect on the area that we'll be working on. Next slide. The fencing that we put there, we were proposing 2.5 up to 3 meter high. Next slide. Next. There, there, this is a situation, sorry, go back again. This is a situation I was talking about. At the moment, there is no fencing. If there's a fencing there, it's not working for us. Click again. This is what we are proposing. On that 50 meter wide, we will have a patrol road. First thing we have to do, we have to build that patrol road before we put fencing. Next again. Then we will create a fencing. A fencing, we must put a fencing with a reaction time of to 20 to 30 minutes before someone cross in. How are we gonna do that next? We will have an echo station. On the echo station, we will use solar panel. And then on the fencing, we'll put detectors. Because what I said, if you put a fencing without detectors, it's a wasteful expenditure. But if you put detectors and then you have an echo system connected to those, then it will be make a, a effective integrated security system next. Then you, you can see we'll detect the, the intruders next. The detector shows that there are people close to the proximity, the radius next. Then it will be reported at the, at the echo station next. Next. Then the, the patrol, oh, and then there will be a, a vehicle that will go immediately to where the, the detector have detected the intruder. On this exercise, we have proposed that the drones must be used because they will be quicker to go to the area whereby the area is disturbed or the fencing is disturbed. Next one. Then this is the area whereby there is a low uh, security. We will put a fencing where it will have the same reaction of about 25%. Just go through that one. I won't, I won't present that one. I won't present the one with the river because it's similar to what I just presented. Just go through. There, there, there you go. Well, if you go to the to the to the to the to the to the, the, the borderline, there are a lot of catchment areas where they are sourced by the mainstream or the rivers that join the mainstream, the main river. In that area, this is what we are proposing. As a department, we should have a similar thing because this is an international standard that has been practiced. We have a report that was done by our consultant. Whatever we are presented here has been gathered from that report. Go through. It shows you, it can even detect someone crossing on the river. Go through. Exactly with the same the same presentation I just done a few minutes ago. Go through the solution. 
this is what we are proposing in order to make sure that our borderline system can work. We need a geometric uh, uh, fibre system whereby we will say for each and every 120 kilometer, we will break down and put what I have presented. There will be a security system for first 30 kilometers, second 30 kilometers, fourth, uh, kilo, third kilometer and fourth kilometer. Then it will be linked at a big uh, control room. The next one. That's what I'm trying to present. I just said it. Next one. This is the, the whole security. If you look at it, we're talking about um, 480 kilometers. Let's take this one and put it in Swaziland. This is exactly how the borderline should be managed in terms of integrated security system. We need a framework of the ITC that will follow exactly this, pro this program. Without this program, we will not be able to make sure that the security systems will work at the borderline. Next one. Oh, thanks very much. We can go back to the main presentation. Heinz, are you gonna flight the presentation or should I? I'll continue, it's fine. Okay, yeah. Slide, slide 10. Slide number 10. Um, this is the financial implication. I, 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 must, I must be upfront about this uh, um, in financial implication. We took the Sandra Norman standard, looking at, uh, at, uh, at the kilometers. And we came up with the estimate that they, they, they are using in terms of um, their standard when they are building their infrastructure. However, we must know that they have not done the integrated security system. That means whatever is presented here as a, as a, as a financial implication, it excludes the sensors, detectors, and the cameras. It's only looking at the infrastructure that will be building there, the fence, the supply of fence and construction of fence, the patrol road. The farmers wanted us to put a, 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 a farm fencing, which is not included here. We have not determined how much it will cost for the farm fencing, because they said if we reach the servitude, they will need to be separated to use the, the access road, the patrol road. Then if you look at RSA, Zimbabwe, and Mozambique, we're talking about 1.3 billion. And this estimate was done two years ago. It will need to be revised. The, the South Africa and Lesotho, we're talking about 1.5 billion. The reason being is expensive is because it, the terrain is mountainous. And we were proposing that to use uh, uh, the, the, the drones because there will be areas whereby we cannot put the infrastructure. That means the drones will be used as a system to patrol those areas. The last one is, uh, is RSA, Eswatini, and Mozambique. We have split that project into two because of the criminal activities that were taking place between Kosi Bay and Dumo in Klabuya Lingana, as we visited on the weekend. And uh, we have split as phase one and phase two. But we, I can tell you now, I'm very excited. We got the approval for two of the projects in terms of the EIA, the, 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 the Lesotho one and the, and the Swaziland. The problem that we are having is only the one of the Mozambique because of the Bay Bridge, because we have transgressed the environmental uh, 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 requirements by building before we get an approval. The next slide. And I would, I would like uh, DDG to present this one and um, she will, can explain better than me. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Melusi. Um, uh, Chairperson and, and honorable colleagues, what we're looking here is uh, the funding strategies 
that we're proposing um, to be presented, one to National Treasury, and the, the second one, which we've already submitted, uh, was to the Investment and Infrastructure Office of Dr. Ramahopa in the presidency. Um, the, the unfortunate thing is that at this stage, uh, they're looking at tender-ready projects, and we are still in planning. But we put in a submission to indicate that we'd like to be considered for funding and to look at the modalities that um, the infrastructure office is proposing, which is um, looking at uh, public-private partnerships together with the DBSA and National Treasury. Um, we do understand that the amount that we require at this stage only for infrastructure is um, you know, exceeding five billion. And um, if we went to work with our partner, um, which is the South African National Defense Force, which will have to approve all of um, the, the um, uh, uh, structures and the infrastructure proposals that we are making aligned to their specifications, and as indicated in terms of their, their, um, uh, their technological solutions that meets the, um, the Border Control Act and the Defense Act as well. And that will include the surveillance strategies. So we um, have to, to work in a more, um, um, or, or have more close collaboration with defense. They do have some proposals and like, um, uh, Mr. Ganiso indicated the aspects of drones, et cetera, has got to be further teased out. So we're busy with the business case um, that we will have to then get further engagement with um, the South African Defense Force on and jointly then make presentations both to National Treasury and the Infrastructure Budget Office to, to then um, solicit funding for what we term as one of the most important projects uh, for, for the country to ensure the safety and security of our border uh, fences and, and, and our borders both uh, internationally um, as well as local, like the, uh, the DM mentioned. And going forward, we'll also have to include DERCO um, into the collaboration efforts. So th this is what this particular slide is about and the engagements will then transpire further. If you could move for, to the way forward, um, Heinz. There's also discussions um, that uh, has been transpiring and continue to be uh, continue to be transpiring with the uh, border management agency. We would like to see a border management master plan from the BMA. We do understand that they're looking at the border posts currently, but we'd like for them to include the borderline fencing um, so that we, uh, and the work that we are doing so that we have an integrated approach so that we could create efficiencies um, and, and ensure that the that, um, efficiencies we're creating is equaling the security for the country uh, and uh, the movement of insurgents, et cetera, is accordingly managed. Um, we, we, we have looked at the presentation um, and um, as uh, uh, Mr. Ganiso has presented, the proposal that is still work in progress, might I add, is aligning to international and South African best practice at this particular stage. Um, there will have to be further engagement, like indicated, the designing and costing will have to be updated um, and we will have to have the engagements like I've alluded to with the Department of Defense, uh, the Presidency, National Treasury, and perhaps DERCO as well to, as, as our support partners in this regard. Um, and yeah, and I think uh, I'd like to pause there and thank you, Chairperson, Honorable Members, and um, the supporters for the presentation. Thank you very much, including the Deputy Minister and the Acting DG and Mr. Malusi. Thank you very much. Chairperson, with your permission, if I can just add one point before I hand back to yourself. Uh, and Chair, that is the issue of, uh, of what this presentation is about and, and, and what we're doing it for. It's about border security and border security is about mitigating border threats. And uh, it's a simple equation that uh, a, border, a border threat constitutes a breach of the borderline. And that breach can come from inside the country or outside. 
And in this regard, uh, the breaches come and come about for very different reasons. In certain countries, they protect their borders from uh, crime or terrorism, as they'd want to call it or describe it. In other countries, you're dealing with economic migrants. So the level of the threat and the type and nature of the threat is different. Uh, and that is the nature of our threat, uh, uh, border threat on our borderline, is that the persons who cross are largely economic migrants. And the other important point to make is that in mitigating border threats, border fences are not used to mitigate border threats by themselves. There are usually three interventions, which was touched on during the presentation, but needs to be emphasized, that a border fence can never, can never prevent um, or mitigate on its own a border threat. It usually deters people from crossing unlawfully or it delays them. Uh, it must work in conjunction with two other mechanisms, which is detection mechanisms, and my colleagues referred to sensors and cameras, as well as reaction and respond, uh, responding mechanisms. So what you have is a border fence must work together with uh, detection mechanisms to identify a breach and then to have a reaction mechanism. On its own, it's of little use, whatever the quality of that fence might be. So these three, three, three interventions must be seen as a single unit. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Um, I think DG um, and your team for the very informative presentations. Uh, but uh, as, as members, uh, I must state it clearly, we don't have some of the slides that Lucy was presenting on. Um, so that one, in a way, it has short-charged us because we didn't read uh, and prepare for that information we just had now, unlike the information we had it, uh, that, was present, that was sent to us uh, yesterday. Uh, nevertheless, I'm, I'm inviting now uh, honorable members, um, uh, questions, comments, you can raise, oh, hands are already raised. Um, Honorable Trings, Honorable Siwisa, Honorable Franz Kalveik, Honorable <laughs> Hicklin, Honorable uh, Graham Mare, Honorable Shabalala, Honorable Marcelle. Uh, there was a hand of Honorable Kopane, but I don't know, oh, Honorable Kopane, in that order. Uh, Honorable Ngumalo. Yeah, you will be the last one. Honorable Tring, Honorable Silvisa, Honorable Franz Kalvik, Honorable Hicklin, Honorable Kayam Mare, Honorable Shabalala, Honorable Machele, Honorable Ngumalo. I think we have lost Honorable Kopane. <clears throat> uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Can I proceed? Hey, please proceed. I've noted you, Honorable Kopan. Thank you. All right, thank you. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Chair. Chair, I think very clearly, as one of the presenters indicated, we have <clears throat> failed to protect our borders. Uh, as a result, this is, um, this is presented with many social economic problems that uh, the country currently has. <clears throat> and this particular fact, excuse me, <clears throat> cannot be argued against. Now, I think it is my... Uh, my submission then that your Border Management Act is, is some 26 years late. <clears throat> this, this should have been implemented many, many years ago. Um, in as, as positive as the Border Management Act is in addressing the, the challenges, but it's coming very late. Um, Chair, again, I think the, the, the presenter indicated that um, KZN have actually done a good job uh, the Mozambican border, and I and I want to differ uh, with with uh, with the presenter when he says that KZN has actually done a good job. We understand that there are challenges. We understand that we need to look at preventing, uh, particularly with regards to the theft of of vehicles. But whether KZN have actually done a good job in the Mozambican border, I think, is debatable. Um, and the reason why I say that is because in our, on our side visit, we were told that some of the problems that were surfaced at um, the Bates Bridge border post have also repeated themselves 
at the KZN Mozambican border. So we have some challenges in terms of uh, due process. Um, we have a, the transport department of KZN that have usurped the, 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 the responsibility of uh, public works. Um, a site clearance also uh, does not appear to have been obtained uh, in, in KZN for that particular 54 kilometers, but they've narrowed it down to actually 25 kilometers. Um, a a memorandum, of, memorandum of understanding or agreement uh, has not been completed. Um, the EIA, and I think that was alluded to as well, uh, the EIA is not in place, uh, yet work has actually progressed. But here, close on to, I think it was 48 million rand has already been spent uh, on the KZN Mozambican uh, border, uh, border fence. <clears throat> but when we were there, <clears throat> that particular um, uh, concrete barriers that, that were put up, I think there was only about 200 to maybe 300 meters that was done. Uh, so in two years, they've only put up some 200 meters and some 48 million rand has, has already been spent. And so clearly, Chair, I think that there are some challenges. And if Public Works is now going to be taking over that particular project, um, and if there have been any transgressions with regards to due process, I think that whether um, we, we have to ensure that uh, our slate is clean, and I don't know whether we need to actually be asking for a, a proper audit, whether the Auditor General needs to come in or SIU needs to come in uh, on that KZN Mozambican side, just to ensure that we are not going to find ourselves complicit uh, in wrong, wrongdoing uh, on that side of the, the border. Thank you, Chair. We must follow the order of Honorable Suiza. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, I would love to call the presenter who was doing the next chair presentation to order. Nothing is too technical. You must come here prepared to explain any difficult terms that because I have a feeling that they rush through it and that's where the money is going to be spent for everything. The sensors, all the hotspots and everything. And then a presenter comes here and tells us that it's too technical. We've got different people with different backgrounds within the department who would understand something. So it should be the last time that a presenter comes here and tells us that it's too technical and then rushes through a presentation. We shouldn't be taken as if we, we, we don't know what we are doing here. We've got people that have got a background on some of the issues that are here. That is why we are serving in this committee. So I think I must call the presenter to order. It should be the last time because it seems as if he or he's undermining the committee to say that if he explains, we won't be able to understand what he's talking about. So his duty is to present and leave the technical part of it out of it. You'll be able to figure it out, out uh, any other way. On that note, Chair, uh, um, I've got I've got a concern. If this plan was made two years ago, if the, if it was made two years ago and we are only hearing about it now, and why was it not? Impli, impli, why it was not implemented at the Bay Bridge? Because if this, if they believe that whatever that they've come up with is going to work, then why didn't they implement it at the Bay Bridge? Why didn't they implement it at the Kosi Bay where we were the, the, the other day? Because you look at the whole thing, it looks so beautiful and so promising and it's going to cap a lot of things that might be happening. Why wasn't it why wasn't it implemented? Because now we are hearing that by 2021 January the projects must be finished. And if the projects don't happen, there's going to be a fruitless expenditure. This is what's going to happen in everything. And going back to the Kosi Bay. A, a project that we, we attended over the over the weekend. I asked them, there's something that was said because I it's it's a pity that 18 DJ was not there because 
I'm worried the engineer was acting like a polit with, like a politician answering questions that are going to get the Department of Public Works and Transport into 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 trouble at the later stage because he was answering political questions because again we had a problem of there was not enough representation from the Department of Public Works. So my question there was, they are saying that they put up the walls and then there's another fence that needs to be put in. My, my question was, where is the sense of putting up a wall and again putting up a fence if we are sure that the wall that has been put up is going to be able to, 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 to serve the purpose that it's supposed to be? And again, my question would be, how do you go, how do you assist a department or how do you assist a project when there is no MOU that was signed before? What are the terms and conditions? And now, because now KZN wants to be assisted by the public works to make sure that they fund and then the project must and and whereas there was no environmental authorization that was given out. Those are some of the questions if the DG was there or somebody from the it was an agreement that later on will be an MOU. Each and every documentation that is relevant is signed and it's up to standard before you can even think about starting even digging a hole to set the hair because now we are talking about border fences and everything that we've been picked up with. There's a mess at Bay Bridge. There can be a mess at Percy Bay if we are not careful. There can be a mess if we are not careful. Because of the technical parts brought up the parts to left out because it's too technical for this for this committee to understand. So can we get clarity why now? What the why what's happening in Kosi Bay? Why a certain fence? Why was there no MOU? Was the, why was there no EA? Why was this project not actually started as a pilot? at the Bay Bridge that we are finding. The, and if we are not careful about what is being presented today about border, about our ports of interest and border fences, if we don't get a clear presentation today, trust me, next year by March or April, we'll be told that funds will be wasted because the technical explained to us. Thank you, Chair. Honorable, oh, Honorable Franz Kalbeka, apologies. Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry, to Honorable Eklund. Okay. Uh, Sharomi, Honorable Sharomi, you may go, I'll go after you. I'm happy with that. Sorry, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for the presentations that's been made. However, Chairperson, I want to raise uh, uh, my concern again, as previously stated, on uh, um, the submission of, 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 of the uh, uh, presentations. We've, I thought we've reached an agreement and, and there has been improvement uh, in terms of receiving presentations well in advance in order for us to prepare ourselves sufficiently. But also, as the, the presenter mentioned, that uh, uh, some of the information is very technical and too technical for us to understand, then at least if we've received uh, that technical presentation, uh, not during the meeting as we've received it today, but well in advance, we could have equipped ourselves with the relevant information to engage properly with, with this report. Because so, so now we are really at a disadvantage position. So we would really like to urge the ministry as well as the, 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 uh, the acting DG to ensure that this thing doesn't uh, uh, happen again. Then, Chair, 
I've been covered by some of the concerns that have been raised, so I'm not going to raise it again. However, my concern is we know that there's other departments involved also in the protection of, 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 of the borders, which uh, includes the home affairs as well as defense. So I would like to know, uh, uh, ask them to, to really outline, ensure that there's effective uh, uh, regular contact and, and continuous engagements with the relevant departments so that we know that, that it's not only a department of public works, but it's a, a joint venture between all the relevant stakeholder uh, all the departments to ensure that each and every one know what uh, their mandated the roles and responsibilities and functions should be. Uh, 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 and uh, it should be clearly spelled out so that we are not finding ourselves wanting at some stage and 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 uh, which leads to to departments not taking uh, responsibility for what they actually were supposed to do then chair uh, when when looking at the presentation i'm 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 very worried in terms of the cost projections because already we know that uh, money is a problem but one of our concerns or our priorities uh, needs to be the protection of our borders. So if we receive uh, reports or presentations like this, which give us projected costs of uh, more than 1.3 billion rand, and uh, that includes, excludes sensors, detectors, cameras, which are so much needed, also excluding the, the, uh, the needs of the, the farm fencing, and we know, Chair, that in order to, to, to make this thing efficient and effective, all those things must be included. And now we, we, we have to ask now the, the, the presenters or our learned uh, staff to go and do another course projection because as we've, we've heard that that projection is, is, is far back that it has been done. So we need an updated cost projections, which would also include uh, all those uh, exclusions so that we can have a true reflection of what actually needs to be done. So that when uh, it might happen that, that uh, the, we, we go into such projects, we don't uh, get the, the situation where the project is not even half, then the money is exhausted. And, and, and all those kinds of, 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 of problems that might arise. So Chair, uh, the other issue that I want to, to establish is how will a uh, detection system be secured from vandalism? Because we know that is a big point of concern and uh, we, we, we don't find some sense in terms of what's happening here. And if all the cost projections and the relevant things are being done, how long will it actually take to finish this thing, because we we can't uh, have a, 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 a presentation and and a project which we we for instance would approve and then we find that it will take twenty years for this project to to do, to be finalized. So we need to know in terms of time frames how long will it take to to finalize this project after. Uh, all the relevant paperwork or administrative stuff is being done. I thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Fanskale. <laughs> thank you, Chair. Um, my comments may sound a little harsh, but it's almost for me like this border management authority is an unfunded mandate because I don't know where the cost, who's going to cover the costs. It needs to be split very, very well between the DPWI, SAPS, Defense, and a whole host of departments. And yet it seems to be falling fairly and squarely on our shoulders because quote unquote, the Department of Public Works is responsible for the infrastructure. And the infrastructure is the basis upon which this entire um, 
border management system is actually working. And it's concerning me tremendously because if you don't have the, the fence, the, def the detection system and the response, we are not going to be able to have effective management of our borders. And unless all three are established and established at the same time, we, it's going to be fruitless and wasteful expenditure. It appears from the presentation that a lot of thought has gone into this. And yet the only time we were really made aware of the fact as a department that we had such porous borders is when COVID hit. Nothing seems to have happened prior to that. It's all of a sudden COVID hit, Disaster Management Act, everybody rushes to secure the borders. As my colleague, Honorable Thring said, we've had 26 years in which to actually start this project and we haven't got anywhere with it. And it's of extreme concern to me that, that we are suddenly finding ourselves completely at, at sixes and sevens having to find billions and billions of red of an estimate that by our own admission and by the admission of, this, of the presenters is completely incorrect because it doesn't inc incorporate certain sections and is years old. And all of this is supposed to be finished in January or February of next year, but we've already been told that there's going to be at least a six month delay because of COVID. And yet the plans only reared their head because of COVID. We are behind the eight ball here. We are chasing an ideal. And I don't know if it's, if it's feasible. That being said, there are serious threats to South Africa's safety along all the borders of this country with every SADC country. Um, and, and it is our responsibility to protect the citizens of this country. We have to do something to secure these borders. But where is the money going to come from? This presentation, as good as it may be, has raised far more questions than it has answered. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, Chair. Um, I know I'm next. I'm sorry, I'm not going to put my um, camera on because I'm just worried about my internet. So if you'll forgive me for just um, just chatting. Um, it took me a little while to join, so I did miss part of the presentation. So I apologize if, if I um, say anything or ask anything that has already been covered. Um, my first question is to what extent are we engaging with other countries to assist us in paying with for this? At the end of the day, a border a border deals with two two countries, and and we are, seem to be carrying the full cost of this, where a large portion of the issue we have is emanating from other countries. And while this is a fantastic idea, and I think it's um, it's all very impressive, I think we've got a first world solution to third world problems. Um, and unless we start addressing the third world problems that we are dealing with. Um, it doesn't matter what kind of fence we put up or what kind of border security we have, there will be breaches. We need to be addressing the concerns that we um, heard about when we were on the border this weekend, whereby the soldiers actually just allow people from Mozambique just to pop through to come and do their shopping and get their medicine because they don't have that in Mozambique. So for as long as we have more of what they need, um, we are going to have more of them crossing over into our side of the of the border than on the other side. Um, the same is, is um, apparent in, on the Zim border, whereby we were advised by Home Affairs that there are people who cross over from Zimbabwe to come and collect their SASA grants every month. Why there are people in Zimbabwe getting SASA grants from South Africa is beyond me, but at the end of the day, this is happening. So. It's all good and well um, coming up with these state-of-the-art ideas as to how we're going to, to protect our borders. We have got to deal with socioeconomic issues on both sides of the border that are um, impacting um, the crossing. The Jersey, border, the Jersey barrier concept is brilliant. Um, a lot of people um, who've been speaking about it on social media are talking a lot about the fact that it's obviously um, 
too low, et cetera, et cetera, and they're missing the point that this is purely for vehicular traffic. Um, it's a fantastic concept. The cost is obviously a little bit scary. My concern with respect to that, and I think that was raised over the weekend, is that there currently is no funding for the existing project that's happening. The money was scrounged from somewhere within the department, promised, and subsequently there's been there's been no action. There's no MOU because there's no national treasury sign-off and national treasury can't sign off because we actually don't have evidence of the money. We don't know whether or not that money still exists because it was in the last financial year, and we don't know whether or not um, any monies have been made available in this financial year to cover the deficit. So we've got a project that's that's currently operational um, with no money, no source of funding at this stage. So we need to start, stop putting the cart before the horse. Everybody's spoken about the Border Management Agency. From my reading of it, Public Works actually doesn't form part of the Border Management Agency. It's all the other departments and Public Works is on the outside just as the implementer of infrastructure. We need to have a role within um, the Border Management Agency if we are going to be funding the infrastructure that will secure the borders. So there has to be um, some mechanism whereby Public Works is involved in those discussions. Um, and, and, and that needs to be addressed quite urgently. My understanding of the Border Management Agency at this stage is although the Act has now been passed, it's going to take 12 years for it to be fully operational. And at this stage, there's no funding for the actual agency. So that's not going to be able to function until there's funding made available, and we don't even know where that funding is coming from. So while this is a fantastic concept, and I'm super excited about, about the, you know, the strides we've made in terms of looking at potential border security, um, I do believe that our first, um, there, there are just too many things that need to be addressed before we can even go into um, construction and, um, and infrastructure builds. Um, so, and then obviously, um, just, just to agree with all my other colleagues, the, the costings at this, sa this stage seem very, very vague. Um, you know, we've, we've based it on a central infrastructure, um, but, but their requirements in terms of the infrastructure bills they do are very, very different to what we're looking at here. So I am concerned that, that this is very much a thumb suck and we're going to be horrified when, when the, the true costs of this project, um, do come through. But again, we have to do something. Um, and I would like to commend the department on the extent of research they've done into best practice. Um, it's certainly a far cry from the washing line. And um, this is definitely um, a direction in which we need to be moving. But unfortunately, there's a lot that's going to hold us back before we can move there. Thank you very much. Uh Good, good morning, Chair and members. Am I audible? Yes, Honorable Shabalala, please continue. Oh. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. My, my instincts are telling me that um, one needs to check um, or recheck um, the ideological perspective around the whole thing. The reason why I'm saying so is because for the last uh, uh, years of democracy, we've never had a problem with Swaziland, uh, Lesotho, the these borders that we are borderlines that we're talking about. Safe to say, Mozambique uh, has been a problem, maybe to a certain extent um, Zimbabwe, but Mozambique, for me, as I come from KZN. I've known it to, to be a cause of problem because people from Mozambique will even uh, come and hijack cars mm -hmm. as far as uh, in Bangini, in the suburbs. Um, but I want to, to check and go back, reflect back, and uh, we had a meeting of reprioritizing the, the programs of the department. Given the fact that um, uh, COVID-19 have left our people in a very destitute uh, 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 situation. And one of the, the, the emphasis was on the job creation. 
and I'm still hanging there. Now I'm hit by this brick of of the the the, the, the borderline, and I don't get the sense of the study that says this is how how risky and these are the effects of not having the borderline up to this 26 years on Swaziland. I don't see that study. On Lesotho, I don't see that, that study. But having said so, uh, uh, a I just want to check because our department is a is an implementing a, a department. Is there a request from the defense uh, that has been uh, as a client department that has been submitted to 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 the Department of Public Works? Uh, safe to say that can we can I propose to a person that can we have a meeting with the portfolio committee on on defense? A, around such issues. And then have the design been shared by the Department of Public Works with Defense and all uh, other stakeholders uh, uh, like other departments that have the interest. Who paid for the designs? At how much? That is one other area that's in a I, 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 I am curious about, have they been endorsed by all the other uh, departments? I know that with the Department of uh, Transport, there have been something around the management, or was it a committee, but there has been a management uh, a structure on the border, on the borders. Uh, 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 but I know it resides with the Department of Transport. Maybe one needs also to to make some inquiry and be able to understand that correctly. The issue of the, uh, the technical side of things, can we get that information? Then we'll go back and say, it's us who need to say, this is technical. We cannot say anything on, on, on that one. Um, Chairperson, I've, I've, I've been hearing the, department, the Minister of, of Defense talking about the drones, drones, drones. And I was wondering whether is Department of Public Works and Defense, are they on the same uh, line of, of thinking around uh, this, um, this, uh, the, 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 this, this issue? Safe to say, um, Chairperson, I, around the whole thing, I don't even hear anything about job creation. And I am asking myself, is it the priority that will wake up in the morning and say, we have delivered to our people? Because right now, I can tell you, we have a dire situation where people are crying out just for a pit of a, a, a food parcel. Isn't there anything that we can focus ourselves on? Then say over time, we will then deal with the, the borders that uh, uh, we will be dealing uh, simultaneously. We are dealing with Mozambique, of course, all of us agree. We're dealing with uh, Zimbabwe, all of us agree. But I haven't had the study, no any cry, no any crisis. That's why I'm saying the presentation that was done on the reprioritization of, of, of the department, we need to focus on that. Thank you. Honorable Shabalala, Honorable Kopale, is she back? Yes, ma'am. Okay, dear. Thank you, Chairperson, and good morning, and thank you for the presentation. Chair, my question, I've been covered by my colleagues who spoke before me, but have you listened to the presentation, Chair? I just wanted to find out, is there any visibility study that has been done? And when was that study being done? And because have you listened to the presentation? It's like, Chair, we don't get to the bottom of everything. So that's why I'm asking about the visibility study. Maybe they can indicate, was the visibility study being done? And how, how long, when was it done? Chair, the other thing that also disturbed me, according to the presentation, there are challenges here. 
especially about farmers who have encroached the area or beyond the servitude line that is the, the that is affecting the entire project is there any or any audit that is being done to identify how many of those farmers are affected and how is it affecting the entire project and uh, what is not clear, Chair, is funding of all these three projects of the borderline, where the funding is going to come. Already we are late about four months with regard to the where, when the, uh, this, uh, the, the estimation was done in terms of the completion of the clearance. So we are, we are late with everything. Can we have the updated uh, you know, budget of all these things? Because for me, it's not making sense that we are talking about all this money that is indicated here. We don't know where it's going to come from, and uh, the updated one because things, everything is going. The price have gone out, and uh, checking the funding strategy, chair. What is also worrying me here? There is a column of the construction period. It's just saying three years, five years. So we, I just wanted to find there's three years from when five years. When we say five years, the the construction period from when to when, because we need to know. Because if it's standing like this, it might be five years to come or three years that has passed. So if they can just clarify in terms of the construction uh, period, they must be specific about that. And Chair, the, uh, the main objective of this presentation was to give us the status quo of uh, and the progress of the whole project. But checking the pictures that were presented to us, especially on the fence, this picture, Chair, I would have appreciated if maybe they would have told us, according to the three projects that have in, been indicated here, this picture was taken from this area between South Africa and Zimbabwe. This picture was taken from this country, South Africa and this country. But it is not clear, just those pictures that are just there. If maybe they can, maybe when they do the presentation, just to be more specific in terms of these pictures which area in terms of the project that is being highlighted here. But most of the things Chair, I'm, I've been covered by my colleagues, but definitely there are problems here, Chair. But let us hear about the, the feasibility study. Maybe that will give us a direction. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Mashele. Honorable Chair. Mashele. Chair, thank you very much, and uh, greetings to yourself, uh, my colleagues, and uh, the DM, as well as uh, staff from the department, including the support staff of the Portfolio Committee. Chair, I'm going to, to be brief because I, I'll speak under general. Chair, I... We, the portfolio committee and the department, it's operating in an abnormal situation. We are behaving like we are some baby police. Uh, every time we meet with the department, uh, we, we should be in a boxing ring. And this is caused by mere technicalities. The department gives us documents late. When it decides to give us this document, we are given Bermuda of information. Um, from there, we must begin to join the dots. And it makes our life difficult. Now, I want to plead with the department that in the ordinary, they should take the work of the portfolio committee serious, give us documents on time. At times, we'll not even invite them to a meeting. We'll just look at the document and be happy with them, and uh, we proceed with, uh, with our work. Our interest is not to be in an engagement with them every day. Our interest is information. But if you have a Bermuda, you are bound to go look for the other information. And it creates a, a, a bad thing. Chair, 
the present the presenter says to us uh, this uh, analysis was was done two years ago and part of it they came to a conclusion that there should be a use of technologies in a, in our borders of which uh, i agree with it but this year when the department wanted to do an emergency procurement of bait bridge they disregarded what they are presenting to us today as an analysis that yes indeed you feeling bad they disregarded what they are telling what they are presenting to us today maybe a clarity into saying if the department has such an analysis what informed them procuring a fence in Bait Bridge without considering that if they are going to put the fence and the fence is not properly manned and the fence does not have technology sensors and all these things and drones and all these things that are telling us, uh, that will be nothing because these people will always have an interest of crossing the fence, so they'll take it down anyhow. But they proceeded and they've spent millions there. Maybe maybe they must clarify how they arrived there. Chair, my other colleagues touched some of the issues I wanted. Hence, I'm saying I'm, I'm, I'm just going to play the general knowledge as a layman. Because the department uh, presented itself as people wants to give us documents late and so that they come and read them for us and we must follow. Then we're, we're going to formulate a common sense questions come going to them. The document presented before us, Chair, is it an idea or a, a plan? Probably if that question can be responded, I'll come with the follow-up. Let me just stop there for now. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Mashale. Honorable Ngumalo. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, um, good morning and to the department team and the acting DG. One must first welcome the presentation, but it's, I think that on the point uh, I look at it, I think it's very comprehensive. And, uh, and I think if we, we read what we plan, I think this, this country will be in a different state than it is now. Because one of the worries that have been outlined by the, the colleagues, even the previous speaker, who, who, Mr. Marshall, is that, you know, we put plans into place, and know how to be how they're supposed to be implemented. Now you say this thing has been um, was adopted as, as as a strategy that will be working, will be used towards um, 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 ensuring that our borders are, are, are secure. But three months ago, you just go there and put a as as the honourable Graham will put it as a a washing line. But you've already established a proper way of doing things. Now this is very worrying. But Chair, because most of the things that I wanted to highlight, um, I think colleagues have touched on it. Now, the only one thing I would like to request and check whether is it uh, within within our space is the program construction pro program. Um, 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 I think they put it in um, on S a Microsoft Project uh, a, a, a a program. Um, that will, will give you specifics as to this is what will be complete when and how, uh, the number of days, the number of months, uh, so that we can be able to monitor the the construction period. As Honorable uh, um, Company was saying, that uh, you know you can't just say three years. Three years from when? Can could be three years maybe after we've even left Parliament um, if we do not come back in 2024. So it must be very stipulated, and we get the program, the construction program. So that we are able to audit our own spaces if we want to do off site 
you can go there and check whether it's still in line with what is being anticipated and how can we anticipate any further delays in order to combine. Good, thank you, so I, I just want to check. Oh, that's yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Mumalo, though you were having serious challenges of uh, the network. I don't know, Honorable Matebula wanted to speak, but was having challenges. Honorable Matebula? Honorable Matebula? Honorable Matebula? Uh, okay, I, I, I think let's, let's leave him there. Uh, thank you again, DM, uh, Acting DG, and, and the team on, on, on your presentations. Just a few comments from me. Um, one, the, the Border Management Authority. Uh, I think that one, as the committee, even when it was pronounced, we, we, we agree with the establishment of it because the, the management of our borders can be in public works uh, function only. It has to be an integration of all the departments that are working on our borders. So the Border Management Authority on that one, we, we agree. But but uh, um, as, as Mr. Malusi was showing us, um, uh, the some of the slides that are not part of the presentation that was sent to us, I understand uh, Ms. Martinez has just sent them now. But I, I want to check, when we were in the Bay Bridge, we found out that there, there is a fence there, which is still in good condition, which was decommissioned in 1994. I think in one of our recommendations as the committee to parliament is that what about activating that, that fence, which was decommissioned in 1994. I want to check now whether, don't we have such infrastructure in other borders. Uh, I won't talk with, with the one of the COSI. We'll talk on that one when we're dealing with the report of the uh, border. But I want to check with you, maybe whether in South Africa and Lesotho, South Africa and Swaziland, South Africa and Namibia, don't we have other fences that were decommissioned that are still in working order? I think if we can utilize those fences, I think the cost would go down. But two, um, uh, acting DG and, and Sasa Malusi, um, the issue of, of bringing in technology, I think that one, it's, it's a good initiative. We are living in the world where technology is being advanced each and every day. The use of drones, the use of sensors, uh, it, it, it's a good initiative to me. But I'm worried about the cost uh, that you're saying uh, for this. Um, you did this two years back. You know that costs are escalating each and every day. Uh, are they realistic uh, if you say that this project will be done now? I don't know how you're going to do that. Maybe when you have to do the project, you'll find out that the cost, they're not really realistic at the time you will implement that. Um, better late than never. Yes, this has not been done in the last few years. But now that we have started with the plans, can you please ensure that um, I'm just echoing what Honorable Ngomalo is saying. Can you please ensure that this is done? We need really to manage our borders. Over to you, DM, and, and the team. Uh, no, thank, thank, thank you, Chairperson. Um, we, we will take the usual approach. The team will go to the questions, and I will come last. Uh, Acting DG. Deputy Minister, thank you very much. Uh, Deputy Minister, let me first of all um, apologize for the statement that was made by one of my colleagues 
about the technical nature of these uh, presentations. I take that back and I will talk to my colleague. I think it's out of order to make such a suggestion. I myself consider uh, myself to be uh, a non-technical person in uh, this, this environment and I've uh, learned to understand these presentations. So I don't think that was respectful and I apologize for that. Um, Chair, I also want to say one more thing to get these uh, issues out of the way. A number of the, the, the members raised the concern about the late presentations and we've been trying to ensure that we don't have these problems and uh, distract uh, ourselves uh, into the non-compliance on the department's part. And I found that the first uh, effort to send the presentation bounced because of the large megabytes in all of these drawings and pictures. And a second copy was then sent to Ms. Martinez. I hope you have it. And I do also uh, regret and offer our apologies in that regard. Uh, the att attachment was sent with the presentation. Somehow the presentation got through, but the attachment bounced back. And we have since sent the, the, the attachment uh, to Ms. Martinez. And apologies there, Chairperson and members of the committee. Chair, to get back to the questions, the first issue that is raised by the members of the committee is on the KwaZulu Natal. Uh, project. And then I want to say that um, the department communicated with the KZN Department of, uh, of, of Transport in December 2019. However, by that time, the, 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 the provincial department had already commenced with the project. So this was something that was raised and communicated to the department after the, the project had already commenced. And it becomes very difficult then to to follow the process rather than play a role um, in its initiation and feasibility. They first communicated during 2018 and somehow the department responded only in December 2019, demonstrating an interest to get involved. But by then the construction was already 10 months in progress and a contractor had been appointed the previous year. So that makes it very difficult to engage in a project that the department was unable to participate in from the very beginning. And what I'd like to say is from our point of view as a department, we'd like to support the KZN Department of, uh, of Transport and, and, and this is the area of our mandate. And at the moment, our DDG for IGR is facilitating the MOU, which should have been done a long time ago. Facilitating the MOU to, 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 to bring the parties together and how we can support each other. And, and that is our intention, uh, given that the, the border fence is our mandate. But I must also hasten to add that the MOU will create all the conditions to ensure that this is the project that does not transgress any of the rules. It must have all the site clearances, the environmental impact assessments. It must meet the requirements of the site clearance as well as uh, constitute value for money among other things. And it must most importantly meet the requirements of the Department of Defense. If it is there purely to prevent vehicles from crossing over into Mozambique, it may not meet all the requirements of the Department of Defense to mitigate border threats. So we'll ensure that in supporting the Department of Transport at KZN, we do so in a manner that is not going to result in any audit or other findings against the Department of Public Works and that we are able to account for our actions to the portfolio committee as well, just to respond to that particular issue with KZN. Uh, Chairperson, I also want to raise the issue of what the nature of this project is. I want to say that this is actually a planning project. It was initiated by the Department of Public Works uh, in response to our appreciation that the border line, the borders were porous, and we needed to develop some kind of uh, intelligence assessment about the nature of the border and provide that information. So this project really is a land feasibility study. The costing and everything else that goes with it is simply a byproduct. It's not the purpose of this investigation. This investigation, in, in my understanding, as a layperson, I call it the land feasibility study. It provides all the intelligence information for the government and the, all stakeholders to understand the nature and provide a pictorial representation of our borderline and, uh, and gives us then the platform to engage further processes, which is consult with the Department of Defense, the DERCO, as well as National Treasury about the steps that will follow. So this is very much a planning process, which is now 80% complete. 
And uh, I wanted to also indicate that the cost projections are high level cost projections uh, without the benefit of engaging the Department of Defense or the National Treasury. And this follows going forward uh, as phase two when we complete the project, hopefully early next year. And the colleagues have indicated that we will attempt to still meet those timelines, even though uh, six months was lost due to COVID-19. Now, Chairperson, what I want to say is there were also questions about the job creation and whether we engage and share this with DOD. Now, what I want to say is uh, that these, uh, the, these questions also pertain to the, the status of this project, that this is still in the planning phase. Once we complete the planning and then the project is actually initiated, then the issues of job creation would then become relevant in the context of the construction phase. So the construction phase is really the next phase that will be initiated after we engage and share all of this information with the Department of Defense and the other stakeholders. Uh, Chairperson, what I'd like to do is to ask my colleagues to come in and also respond to some of the other questions. And uh, I want to also indicate that um, uh, a number of the members made mention of the fact that we have all of this information and we failed to use it on two occasions. First of all, at KZN and in particular at Bainbridge. And that is correct. And it is also a finding of uh, the investigation that was conducted by the department that we failed to adhere to the conditions of the site clearance. And in fact, that site clearance was issued already on the 10th of March before the lockdown. Uh, and this provisional site clearance was issued by the town planning director of Mr. Caniso, and I'd like him to touch on it. And one of the findings that he made in his report is that the department failed to meet the requirements of its own site clearance processes. So there uh, uh, we, we also find that uh, non-compliance for which uh, the consequence management processes are in place. Uh, Chair, I may have missed the two, one or two questions, but let me ask my colleagues to, to, to come in and to also give their input with respect to issues of the farmers and the funding. But I'd just like to make that point and re-emphasize it, that this is an initiative commenced with by the department in response to the uh, porous borders. It's a planning exercise. It's what we refer to as a land feasibility study. Uh, in the department uh, and, and technically called the site clearance process. So this is a planning instrument. It will give us the intelligence information to share with the respective stakeholders what we do in subsequent phases. How do we respond to, to the border security risks identified during this phase? Or what is it going to cost? And what are the needs of the DOD? And it will then evolve as we move forward. So let me ask my colleagues to come in, Sasa and, and Malusi. Thank you, Chairperson. Can I come in? Uh, just before you, Malusi, with the, the technical aspects, I just want to uh, thank the honorable members uh, for the questions and uh, just align to what the acting DG has indicated that we're looking at the, the, the long-term solution and within the planning, the first phase would be the, the, the site clearance, the site due diligence, et cetera. But, but in, um, like alluded to, we went a step further because when you make funding proposals to National Treasury, you require to have certain amount of information, a certain level of first level of due diligence that is done so that when you're making your proposal in terms of the MTF requirements, you have uh, information, although it would be estimated information, to give you an estimate of the project cost. Then the project can be determined as to whether it's going to be a mega project like in this instance, because it's over 350 million rand per annum, it then gets into the realm of a mega project. And then Treasury looks at it in terms of their funding proposals. This then falls into a PPP realm, the detailed um, feasibility study, what Treasury terms a uh, technical assessment TA1 will be done. Uh, so more detailed feasibilities will be done based on the information we provide this first level of information. They go into the next level of financial feasibilities to determine then how they're going to fund this project and, and what type of partnerships arrangements they're going to enter into. So this particular study then is supportive of that particular process that is going through. And uh, I think like some of the members appreciated that there were some detailed 
work and and um, um, uh, initiative uh, that has been taken uh, by the technical team uh, with the appointment of the consultants to look at an integrated approach. Uh, in doing so, um, it was also um, when this, the, 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 the particular specifications were drafted was we, we worked um, at the first level with Department of Defense. Um, the, the, the particular process at this particular stage is 80% complete. We've still got work to be done. The business case is nearly finalized. And this then will be presented to the, the relevant stakeholders, including the Department of Defense, the BMA, um, uh, and, and, and uh, going forward, National Treasury, DERCO, et cetera. So this is the, the purpose of this study. But I, I want to appreciate the members' comments because I think they're very relevant. And some of the insertions and um, the comments and uh, uh, made are going to be taken through into the business plan. We want to, to assure, uh, assure members, especially in terms of the engagement um, with the other countries um, and the sharing of costs, et cetera. Um, we, we, we've alluded to it um, you know, um, in, in discussions. It's not embodied in the business case. We haven't had a detailed discussion with DERCO as yet. Um, that, that is to come as, as we finalized the business case, et cetera. We also have not finalized the, the designs and what we are accepting as the, the best solution for the borderline fencing. The specifications, et cetera, um, that is currently being shared uh, and also not finalized is being looked at by the technical team within the department and being uh, assessed by the um, the architects, um, the QSs, uh, et cetera. So when the solution is, is going to be pronounced upon, it will also be technically sound uh, in, in, in that regard. Um, so, so also with Department of Defense, they have engineers, et cetera, that we will utilize and bring on board. So there's still you know, an amount of work to be done, a body of work to be done in that regard. And um, you know, and, and I want to 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 take on all of um, you know the inputs made, the valuable inputs into the business case, so that we can take it uh, take the entire process forward. There's also an exercise um, done. Um, uh, Defense also hasn't shared um, that with us from the technology perspective, in terms of Department of Defense looking at how they can tighten up their um, patrolling um, of the, 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 border, uh, the borders. And they're also looking at technology to assist in that regard. In, um, they're looking at the drone solutions, et cetera. So there has to be that alignment as well that is going to happen. Now, the, 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 the DG is, is um, you know, setting up a technical team because he is um, you know, just started acting and he's um, acknowledged that this requires a specific structure and specific dedicated resources to deal with this massive project and give it the due, um, you know, uh, resource and requirements that that um, it, it, it indeed needs to to have. So um, yeah, so I think in terms of the construction program now, once again, in terms of our first level of feasibility, these are type of uh, components that we need to have into the feasibility. And these are projections. Now, the site um, uh, clearance process normally takes anything from one to five years once we get into site clearance. Um, in, in this particular regard, um, and our standard of correction, we won't need massive amount of, uh, you know, bulk infrastructure servicing um, because you have the border posts that are, are already in place. Um, you know, they, they obviously require maybe a bit of expansion, et cetera. So we will have cost saving times in that regard. So the construction times, um, we will have to, uh, we, we put it in, in terms of anything from two to, to five years, given the extent of the requirement, we're spanning over 1,844 kilometers. <coughs> extensive, um, you know, fence that we're putting on. Um, so, 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 so we've got, got a note that, but it's noted that 
a construction program requires to be firmed up. I note and I acknowledge that, and we'll take that through into our business case um, as, as well. So that we will, will definitely do. I uh, just want to see if I've missed anything. I, we, we noted um, the, the BMA and, and our role, um, our role within the BMA um, because of the infrastructure, like mentioned by Honorable Hickelman, um, is the infrastructure and the infrastructure actually supports the, the delivery efficiencies and that's what to be integrated, that is acknowledged. We do play a, a role um, with the BCOCC, we have there's monthly meetings that transpires via the key accounts management unit with historically what was known as the BCOCC component and now the BMA. So there is representation at uh, the meetings that happen uh, generally on a monthly basis. We, 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 when this is complete, we'd want to present to the, um, the BCOCC. We've already alluded um, to, and the inputs made by our department is that the BMA together with the department must have an integrated master plan. And, and we all need to, to, to work towards that and support that integration uh, that needs to happen. We acknowledge the, the and, and like mentioned by our deputy minister, the engagement with um, DERCO um, to, to engage the SADC countries, et cetera. And also from the financial perspective, uh, like was mentioned, we'd have to take, uh, take that through as well. So I thought, um, you know, I just want to indicate that we appreciate all the comments, all of the inputs. We will, uh, we value that and we'll take it through because this is work in progress. We can most certainly take this through and embody it into our business case. Um, and, and ensure that, um, you know, that, that uh, we have your support when we get to National Treasury, et cetera, for funding of this project and understand that with National Treasury, more work has to be done and, and more, and, and um, as we go along, um, more visibility on the project, et cetera, has to be articulated. So thank you for that. Malusi, you wanted to come in? Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Acting DDG and uh, DDG. Uh, I would like first to tender my apology. Um, I think my message was uh, delivered otherwise. Um, I, I must just set on record that we were told when we were coming to the presentation that we, we should stick to 12 uh, slides. The reason I jumped the information, it was not to ignorant of ignorant. It was the question that we must stick to 12 slides. I really apologize for that. I was not undermining the portfolio. I really have a, a respect for, 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 for my seniors. The, the, the first thing that I wanna address before the understanding of the process, I wanna spell out the process for DPW. There are three processes in DBW for the implementation of the project. It's a pre-planning, which is the site clearance that deals with the legal and the legislative framework to address those issues. We call it the guideline information. The second phase is planning and design. The planning and design has not yet started. Is waiting for the site clearance. Most of the question that have been posed by the, by the portfolio members are on the planning and design. It's very critical to understand that at the planning and design, we'll be able to address all the, 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 the questions. The how much is gonna cost the project? How many people are gonna be employed for this project? Then after that, it will go for tender and construction phase. At the moment, we are just dealing with the guideline information that is, is predetermining for planning and design. When it comes to the information, why did we use the information of site clearance for Bay Bridge and, uh, and KZN? For Bay Bridge, there was information that was uh, issued and given to the people who were planning and designing the fencing. That information was ignored. It was there. The security report, everything that I presented here, it was there on the, on the information that we're given to plan accordingly. 
to follow what we are proposing for the borderline, but however it was ignored by the people who were doing planning and design. For KZN, it was a, a question of the KZN for double work that we are doing. The, one of the concerns, why are we doubling the fence? It's not going to be double. On the application that we have done with the Department of Environmental Affairs, we said the 54 kilometer road is for the barrier to prevent the criminal activities. What we will do, we will have to align to what the KZN people have put there, not doubling the fencing. We're not gonna do that. We will be aligning, we will adding to what they have already put there and put the necessary infrastructure that will encompass what is already been there. The, 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 the question of the idea or a plan, the idea brings a plan. What have we done? We have done an extensive and comprehensive research in the information and the guideline process, which is site clearance. Based on that information, which brought up an idea, an idea was formulated to the conceptual model. What I was presenting here at my face, I was presenting a conceptual model of saying the planning and design must follow this conceptual model, which this conceptual model has been uh, uh, discussed on a public participation where the affected members of the public will look at my plan and say, we approve. Based on your conceptual plan, when you go to the contextual plan, contextual plan is whereby you are doing actual planning. Then they will use that idea because at my stage, I just needed the, 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 the consent of the public to present to them, to say, I am doing this at the borderline. Would you support this? Which is the conceptual plan? Then that conceptual plan will be taken to the stage, second stage, which is the planning and design. When it comes to the planning and design, it's going to be a contextual plan. At the moment, it's just a conceptual plan. The, 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 the feasibility, uh, the DDG already touched on the feasibility. When it comes to the, to the social impact study, social impact study were, were done to the whole three border post and then we can make it available. We have done how many people are gonna get employed, but it's just a predetermined study. When it goes to the planning and design, the planning and design must be informed what the study we have done. All what we have done here is not a waste. It will be presented on the planning and design. That is the implementation stage. For us now, we were just giving the, the, the second phase, which is planning and design, so that they can have the legality framework and they can have a legislative framework and they can have the concerned use from the public participation. What needs to be done on the borderline? I just wanted to address that. Thanks very much. Um, honorable members, <sighs> sorry, uh, my device just fell. Uh, honorable members, um, uh, those are the responses and from the questions that you have raised. I don't know whether the DM wants to come in or should I invite the second bite from the honorable members? Uh, th thank you, thank you, Chairperson. L let me try and uh, cover some of the areas so that they, they do not come back again uh, okay. when, when we get the second round. Um, firstly, le let me indicate uh, uh, and add a, a voice on the apology. First, for the late information, I don't think it is in our interest as a, a political leadership in the department to uh, disable the, the committee uh, in doing its uh, roles and, and responsibilities with respect to oversight. I think for us, we, we respect that responsibility because it does not only, uh, it may come across as that uh, there's, there's criticism to the department, but for us, 
it helps us to see weaknesses in our system and uh, try to work to correct them. And, and therefore, this issue of um, late submission, I hope the two PLOs that are on the line, PLOs from both my office and the minister's office, are taking note that, uh, because sometimes these issues run between administration without us knowing that uh, there are delays. And therefore, now I am publicly charging them uh, to, to ensure that where there seems to be delays in submission of information to the committee, they have a responsibility to let us know. And uh, we wouldn't want to hear that as a concern from the committee again, uh, that there the has been delay in, in, in submission. Um, and, and therefore my apologies for that uh, chairperson. For, for us, we respect oversight. You know, with the visit to Kosi Bay, uh, it has unearthed that which we were not aware of, uh, the MOU issues and the like. And, and therefore for us, um, oversight is, is, is a second tool to help us in managing uh, the department. Uh, and, and, and therefore, we really appreciate that decision by the committee to, to conduct oversight there, because now uh, we also know which areas to look into as, as the MOU uh, or MOA work uh, is being uh, resuscitated. Thirdly, on the question of um, the, 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 this information, I think both the DG uh, and, and uh, the manager responsible have uh, retracted. And again, let me also add my apology there. Um, it's, it's one of those things that you didn't know. There was someone who used to say to us, you don't know what one is going to say before they say it. Um, and, and therefore, Chair, uh, once again, our apologies uh, for that one. And the last one, there's a, an underlying question from the committee, which I agree with, that says, you have this information, why have you not utilized it? Um, and, and I dare say, uh, that is why we have an investigation um, taking place on the bait breach, but also uh, consequence management uh, that is uh, taking place. Be because if people, when they know uh, that there is this information, they choose to overlook it um, for some reasons best known to themselves. Um, one could say it is either lethargy or it, it is corruption or both. So uh, we have a resolve in the department that uh, corruption, lethargy will not be tolerated. And uh, I think that, that that's one example. There are more to come. Um, that we, we can't continue to be this department that is viewed as, as being suffering from inertia uh, at the expense of services to the people. But also we can't be this department that is viewed as the most corrupt at the expense of services to the people. That we cannot, as, as leadership of the department, sit back and watch. Uh, we, we, we can't do that, hence, uh, the, 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 uh, the actions uh, with respect to consequence management. Indeed, most of the projects, once implemented, even if we refer to this one, which is still at uh, one could say phase one uh, or stage one uh, level of planning, um, but once implemented, ours is to ensure that we drive these programs in a manner that seek to, first, they must realize the 
their objectives. And this one being that of the security of our borders, but also we don't do that in isolation. We do that understanding the challenges um, of, of, of first the location of South Africa, but also uh, the relationship of our country with the neighboring countries. We wouldn't want to be seen um, with the, or associated with the example of the US and, and uh, Mexico. We don't want uh, that kind of uh, example. We would want to be seen as yes, securing our borders, ensuring that there is uh, free trade between our countries, but um, our borders are, are, are more secured. And, and therefore the question as to is that part, is that part that are problematic? We may say, uh, Honorable Chabalala, yes, in terms of prioritizing, we can prioritize those problematic uh, areas, but that does not say we must let the other areas loose because once we do that, uh, even those mischief makers uh, will move from where we strengthen our security to where we weaken our security. And therefore it becomes important that all our borders are secured in a manner, yes, that promotes economic activity between the countries, but that ec economic activity must be legitimate and that e economic activity must uh, result in, 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 in both uh, the, the countries that are neighboring uh, economically gaining as, as countries themselves. Uh, we can't allow a situation where um, criminality uh, becomes legitimized. Uh, and therefore securing our borders is to try and deal with criminality, but promote uh, economic development. Um, I, I thought that Chair, at least those few, um, I must come back with, um, we will take uh, further questions if there are any. Thank you very much, Chaperson. Thank you, DM. I'm now inviting um, further comments and questions, honorable members. Uh, only the hand of um, honorable Hicklin has been raised. I don't know whether in this second round or it was raised before, but was not. It is the second round, Chair. Okay, thank you, Honorable um, uh, Hicklin yes. and Honorable Siwisa after Honorable Hicklin uh, in that order. Thank Honorable. you so much, Chair. Yes. Um, my first and foremost to the DM, thank you so much for your comments. It's, it's very heartening to me that we have someone from the senior echelons within the ministry who understands our need to be able to ask questions and get answers to them. My, my, my question is not so much a question as a comment to Ms. Saban. Um, when we're talking about the finances, because I understand that one has to present finances to the National Treasury in order to, to register that we have a project that needs to go forward. But I, I, I just need to reinforce that these are SAMREL based figures from two years ago. And therefore, in my estimation, humble that it may be, these are absolute thumb sucks. And I think that in order to present a more credible figure to the National Treasury and to the various other stakeholders, I think we need to be more realistic in our figures that we present because I don't know, I mean, I can say to you that it's gonna cost five rand when in essence, I know for a fact Five Rand is not even get, going to get my toe in the water. And I'm just concerned, as astronomical as these figures are, my question to you is how realistic are they? Thank you, Chair. Honorable Suisa? 
Ana Rabbi Suisa. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. Uh, Chad, thank you. Thank you for the responses and um and also the response from the from, from the presenter that did the presentation on the technical what what. So it's not his fault. We'll deal with it in another meeting. Uh, Chad, uh, I, I need clarity again because there are there are dates set for completion of projects. And then we are told that it's only a plan and implementation or a draft of what needs to be done. And yet we've got dates that have been put down, February 21st, January 2021, January 2021. And yet again, we are told that there still needs to be consultation with other departments specifically national treasury specifically defense specifically deco as to what is the way forward so i don't understand if are we talking about the same thing here are we talking about the projects that are already running or are we talking about the presentation on what's the best way to deal with a, a people entering South Africa illegally at this instance. So it seems as if we are talking about two things. Slide seven talks about estimated frames for completion. And then we were told about six months, we couldn't finish the projects because of the COVID and the lockdown and everything. And then again, in passing, I had the presenter talking about, because my question was, why wasn't this implemented in dealing with the issue of the Bay Bridge? And then the response was everything was there, but none was used. And maybe either the 18 DG or the DM can answer as to if they feel that there is this plan again, which again the answer says is just a plan, it hasn't been presented well as to whether it will work, we haven't consulted other departments. Because if I can remember properly, in the SCOPA meeting when the, the issue of Bay Bridge was dealt with, and the, 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 the Minister of Defense spoke about drones, even the Minister of Public Works spoke about looking into drones and everything. So I need clarity, which one is which? Are these projects already there? The technical aspect that has been presented, is it going to be implemented there? Or is something else going to be implemented whereby also there's an issue of feasibility hasn't been done in everything. So slide seven, are the projects running? Are we using what was presented to us about the drones and the sensors and everything? If not, what is being what is being implemented in those borders pertaining to control maneuvering of people between the two countries, the three countries that are linked to South Africa. So I get the feeling that we are talking about, maybe I'm, I'm a bit slow, but I get the feeling that we are talking about two separate things. Maybe if I can get clarity on that, is this slide seven? Is it something else? An extra A, is it something else or is it something concurrently? Because if it's some, if we are talking about the same thing that's going to be implemented, and then we are told that there hasn't been any consultation, then I think that we are sitting with a problem here. Thank you, Chair. Laura Marcelle. Thank you very much, Chair. Let me appreciate the responses from the department and depart from where the latter speaker ended. That uh, the response was that someone decided to ignore uh, expert advice. 
And it's emphasized by the DM that the uh, consequences will follow. And we are happy to, to learn about that. When the instruction was given, we are told on the conceptual plan that I'll be corrected that uh, you needed uh, 2.5, or you need or you needed 2.5 billion to do the Bait Bridge uh, project. And uh, I'm saying I'll be corrected on that. Now, when the instruction was given and the money that has been spent currently on the project, is it part of the 2.5 billion or not? Uh, that money was taken from the 2.5 billion that uh, we, we have been told that you need to, to do that program outside the census and all these other things. Let me, let me stop there. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, uh, honorable members. Um, uh, Acting DG and the team, can you please respond on these follow up questions and new questions? Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Uh, Chair, let me hand over to Malis, Malusi, and Sasa first, and what they don't cover, I will. Um, they are familiar with some of the issues around the questions. Sasa, Malusi. Uh, can I start first? Proceed. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Slide seven. Let, let's look at the estimate time frame completion of the site clearance processes. I have uh, addressed three programs phases. I said there is the there is the site clearance phase, which is phase one. Phase two is planning and design. Phase three is tender and construction. These estimate timeframes are only, only looking at the first phase of the project, which is a legal framework addressing the legal framework and the legislative framework and the registration of the 50 meter wide servitude along the borderline. Then it does not talk about the planning. Planning has not been done. There's no funding for planning and design and uh, tender and construction. The only thing that we are doing currently is the guide work is to collect information, is to register the servitude, is to, is to do the site clearance processes, which is the phase one, is the pre-phase for planning and design and the tender for construction. It's the same project, but it starts with the pre-planning, planning and design, and tender and construction. No one can, can start planning and design without pre-planning. Because pre-planning is addressing all the issues that can bring litigation. You build into someone's property, you have not get an approval for EIA, you have not done public participation, you have not registered what needs that to be done. You have not conducted the land surveying work to determine the borderline, where are the borderline, and get the, the, the general uh, uh, plans. That's what we are doing at, at the phase one. It's not talking about the implementation yet. It's just talking about the pre-phase. It's a pre-phase of the project. We have not registered the project for planning and design because there's no funding. And there's no project for tender and construction. I just wanted to clear that it's just that this, this presentation is basically for the pre-design phase. Thanks very much. Sasa, you want to add before I come in? Yes, uh, thank you. Just to add, when we get into the planning and the design phase, that is when the realistic, uh, the more realistic um, you know, figures will, will emanate from, from that particular process, um, as we explained, because then you, you're going to get a fully-fledged technical uh, team, professional services team on board, which will constitute the engineers, the architects, as well as the QSs. Um, and then that is where then we will get more an accurate base on the figures. However, 
we also, um, you know, we, 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 we did go to um, the infrastructure committee with the estimates as we have them because we're trying to run concurrent process and, 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 and get in there to get money so that we could, as Malusi alluded to, at this stage, we're trying to source money to get into planning and design. So if the project is registered and we're able to get some monies for that, that would also be very good, either from the uh, SIDS program or from National Treasury. And, um, and, and so there's concurrent processes running to get towards that. And that includes the consultation process uh, with the relevant stakeholders at this stage, mainly with, uh, with, with the Department of Defense uh, and the BMA. So, so it's just to get into that level before we get into construction, et cetera. So this is all of the work that, that we're sharing with you. We've indicated it's, it's, it's work in progress and uh, it's the first level of the planning phase. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sasa. Chairperson, uh, if I can uh, this conclude our response uh, by indicating that this particular document when complete, hopefully early next year, will provide us with a comprehensive understanding of, of uh, the land and the land feasibility study can be used as a basis to engage the other stakeholders towards addressing the question of our porous borders. So ultimately, even though there's so much of work uh, to, to, to still complete uh, in terms of subsequent phases, we've placed ourselves in a position of strength to address the issue of porous borders and to take uh, the subsequent decisions and this entire process forward. So uh, I'd like uh, to communicate that to the committee that uh, it's something that, uh, you know, that was necessary given the years of uh, deterioration of our borderline and border fences. And we now understand where the borderline is. We know the land topography. We've conducted the land surveys and we're in a position to take the next step. Uh, and we are hoping to engage the committee for support in the allegations with the, with the other departments, especially DOD and National Treasury to make the entire project come to fruition. And then finally, Chair, uh, the Honorable Michelle made mention of somebody ignoring the expert advice. And I'd want to confirm that on the 10th of March, the town planning unit issued a provisional site clearance certificate for the entire borderline that had included the vicinity within Bay Bridge. And within one week on the 17th, a site visit was uh, conducted and uh, the decisions were taken to put up the 40 kilometers, 20 on either side of the border post. And in that meeting and subsequent pull of quantities, there was already a transgression with the site clearance uh, authority given a week earlier. And uh, on Monday last week, we uh, charged 11 individuals from inside the department for their role in the uh, Bait Bridge uh, fiasco, if I can call it that. Um, with respect to the failed procurement processes that resulted in the irregular award of the, uh, the contracts to, to two companies, as well as the irregularity uh, surrounding the implementation, which resulted in a fence that is not fit for purpose and incurred then, uh, as a consequence, fruitless expenditure. So that is in progress, uh, Chairperson, and we will keep the committee informed of progress in that regard. We also have uh, the SIU case. The SIU has brought an application to the tribunal to set aside some of these contracts, given the unlawful nature, and that they were awarded in an unlawful manner, and to recover any uh, payments from the contractors that was not due to them. We've also reported this matter to the Bulk Environment Professional Councils to investigate the consultants who were involved in this matter. We found especially that the, the, the company called the implementing agent, Prof Team, they breached their fiduciary duties towards the department and they developed a bill of quantities, almost three times the value of the contract and the cost to the contractor. And they breached their responsibility towards us. Uh, we also uh, reported the matter to the police through the SIU with respect to the advance payments were made with fraudulent uh, intent in that the payments were made and, uh, and they were consummated with a false pretense that work was already complete and almost 60% of payments were made within uh, three days of the conclusion of the of the contracts. So chairperson, all of those consequence management processes are in place and we will keep the committee informed as it unfolds. Thank you. Uh, thank okay. you, thank you, chairperson. Yes. 
there's, there's a, a question from Honorable Suiza. And I, I do want to say that, um, Honorable Members, that issue or the, the point raised in Scopa by a Minister of Defense, much as I would not be speaking on her behalf, but my understanding is that um, th there is nothing um, what different or conflicting with what is being raised in the plan around the issue of drones. Because even in this um, very rough first uh, draft uh, plan, um, what I had referred to earlier as our thoughts, but reduced in, in writing. Um, it refers also to, to the use of drones, only where uh, it will be difficult to for human beings who are the members of defense to reach the areas. That is what she was referring to as well. So for me, there's, there's really no conflict there. We we almost uh, raising this the same uh, kind of uh, views. But Chair, maybe earlier I missed to indicate that for me, the implementation of this uh, plan, why we have to up our game and chase it is that uh, it, 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 it is becoming a challenge to the country, the level of uh, illegal immigrants in the country. And it is affecting us as well because it, it brings about higher levels of poverty. Um, it brings about a, a lot of other challenges uh, which are difficult to, to control inside the countries, which are social uh, challenges. Um, but also it complicates the already uh, challenging environment uh, economically, which is why we, 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 we are of the view, this is long, very long overdue, and we need to find a way to kind of speed up um, uh, implementing it. It is true that implementation again, where we will be able to, to, to get jobs because with the, with the management of the border itself, it's, it's going to bring about the need for full-time personnel that will be working in, in these um, sites that were illustrated earlier on, um, people to manage uh, our border, even post the construction of, of, of the fence, which the fence in itself, when it is being constructed, uh, will lead to some jobs. But for us, um, it, management of the borderline requires sensitivity to the economic situation of, of the region, SADC, but it also requires us at least as a country to know who is within our borders. It, it can't be right to say we, we because we are all Africans, it's, it's right not to know who is inside your country. That we cannot uh, truly justify, especially with the increasing rates uh, of crime uh, along uh, these border lying uh, areas. Uh, and therefore, for us, having the understanding of the portfolio committee on the need to speed up uh, ensuring that we finalize the plan, we involve all rail role players, we implement uh, so that we stop this thing of saying this was started so many years ago and we end up having to ask ourselves, but if this was seen then that it will help the country, why was it not implemented? We now need to implement so that we 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 save both our people uh, uh, and our country 
uh, in, in finding ourselves to have, to have to deal with very challenging uh, situations and environment, which would have been complicated by non-implementation of, uh, of security uh, on our borderlines. I, I thought that, uh, Chairperson, let me, in, in finalizing this, that we, we have to, as humanely as possible, but uh, as surely, securely as possible, ensure that uh, in the country we know who's here, and de Department of Public Works, as this provider for infrastructure, must, must quickly act uh, with respect to this. Of course, in, in, in conjunction with the border management uh, agency, as well as the team of departments that are involved uh, in the work uh, of our borders. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity once more, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, thank you, DM, uh, Acting DJ, and, and the team. Uh, once again, you have tried to assist us in understanding in deep details of what is happening in our borders, though we are still in the site clearest planning stages. Uh, but as you know, our hours as the portfolio committee is to oversight, is to hold you accountable. We are going to be watching uh, this with the hog's eye as we have done so in the previous uh, um, projects that we have done. Uh, so you must not be shocked when we visit some of the borders because we really want to see what is happening. And also, as I indicated earlier, we would want to see this uh, coming into being, not only as the plans, not only as this first phase of the planning, but developing it even to the last stage where tenders are out, where the actual uh, construction will be, will be done. We really need to make our borders secured and safe. Uh, all, and again, we have indicated as the committee, we support the issue of the border management authority and would like to see you working with all the other departments that are involved in the management of our borders. Thank you again, um, DM and, and, and your team. Uh, I think you, we may release you now because we'll be dealing with the minutes of the previous uh, meetings that we, we held uh, before Set. the end of the week. Yes, Thank you very much, Chair. A quick one. The, the, the context of my question regarding someone who decided to ignore, it's, on the, it's not on the basis of the technical specification of the Bait Bridge border post and what transpired. I am saying check. The presentation today here tells us that the department has a plan and it understands the kind of a borderline that you need. With that, there was an instruction in Bait Bridge and the rest we know, we know it. Now, probably to assist the process because there is an admission from uh, the acting DG, the DM. Maybe the department must assist us to give us a progress report in two weeks and tell us what they have done as consequence management in relation to those that decided to ignore the instruction. Because not, not, not those that decided to ignore the, the, the technical aspect or advice that is presented before us today. I don't know whether I'm making sense, Chair. Thank you, uh, Honorable Marshall. 
but but uh, Honorable Marcelle, I, I don't think your your question, uh, what what you have said later on, you that you would want a report uh, that we are really interested in. We got the SIO report. The acting DG has presented that the there are steps that they have taken. We we want constant reports. Um, whatever that is happening, not not being presented acting DG the way as by the way, we want to return reports on the issue of paid bridge because we have to inform South Africa that the 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 action that you are taking are they really happening? So can we get that report? I, I think let's let's stop there saying that we want a report. Uh, a written report of what is happening now uh, after the SIU investigation, after people being charged, have they been um, released from the work or whatever? We want that report. I, I think we must stop there for today on the issue of the bait bridge. We have discussed it several times. We have a report that is going to parliament with the recommendations, but now we want an update on what is happening within the department on acting on the SIO report. Thank you, Honorable Marcelle. Uh, DM and the team, can you be released? Nola, can we deal with the minutes? Thank you, thank you, Chaperson. Enjoy your day further. Thank you. Thank you, Chaperson and Honorable Members. Thank you, Chaperson. Thank you, Chair. Um, the minutes that are in front of us for consideration are the minutes of the meeting that was held on the 10th of October 2020, which was last week, where in which we were dealing with the consideration and adoption of the Bay Bridge Oversight Reports, as well as the consideration of, uh, of minutes of previous meetings. And I, again, I would like to urge the honorable members to check the attendance register and see if uh, it has been captured correctly. Moving right along, um, while we were considering the report, uh, members made inputs, and 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 so we had then we, we then went back and actioned those inputs. We then submitted the report to our manager for ATC, which I have just learned that it was never sent through uh, by himself to, for, for ATC. But then we are dealing with that one on our side. It should probably fall into today's ATC. Um, and we apologize for that error. I will also send the copy of that report to all honorable members for um, just for checking, uh, because we are quite confident on our side that we have incorporated all the other aspects that members felt were important for us to, to add. And then we considered minutes, the minutes of the meeting held on the 26th of August and the meeting held on the 2nd of September were, were adopted. There were also announcements, announcements made regarding the oversight visit that we went to um, last weekend. Um, the strategic planning session that has been postponed and the expropriation bill that has been uh, tabled before parliament. Okay, on the resolutions, it, it basically speaks to the two resolutions um, are speaking to the inputs by the honorable members, way in which they're saying the minister is the one responsible for the running of the department and as such, uh, she remains accountable for everything that transpires under her watch. So this recommendation was therefore added to the report, as you may see, um, as you will see when you get to send the report. And the second recommendation was also added to, to the report. That should be all from my side, Chairperson, regard, regarding minutes. Thank you, Ms. Martinez. Um, honorable members, the, the minutes of our last meeting in which we were dealing with the, with the report on the Bait Bridge uh, oversight. Um, those are the minutes. Any comments, question? First, 
or are they the true reflection of what was discussed in our meeting? Okay. Yes, Honorable Mumalo. Yes, I just want to find out um, when is the spread ending postponed? Ms. Martinez. Oh, thank you, Chair. Yeah. Uh, the, the Office of the House Chairperson issued focus areas, revised focus areas, uh, sometime last week. Um, this issue of strike planning sessions for all the portfolio committees has been put on hold. And therefore, we will await um, a go ahead from that office as of to when, when again can we go ahead and do our strike planning sessions. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, Ms. Martinez. Any honorable Mumalo? No, I think thank you to you and uh, Nola for the response. Uh, um, any any mover for the adoption of the minutes? A person. Honorable Pascal Vaig. I'm moving for adoption of the minutes, Chair. Uh, noting that uh, uh, the the strat plan would have also included our engagement in terms of our B triple R process. So seeing that uh, it was not approved, what is the way forward in terms of our B triple R engagements? Can I come in, Thank you. Yes, there's also a hand. Or oh, was it before, Honorable Marshall? No, it's before, Chair. Okay, 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 okay. But I agree with the minutes, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Marshall. Honorable, you, Ms. Martinez. <laughs> Thank you, Chairperson. Um, the revised focus areas, Honorable Members and Honorable Chair, were also inclusive of a a an indication that the the submission of b triple r's has also been postponed um just as we had earlier proposed to to our management and, and the office of the house chair so they have now been postponed for all the departments that have not yet tabled their annual reports to parliament have also been given leeway to at least submit by latest the 12th of november no the 16th of november and therefore, we have the, the we have been given the period 17th to the 19th of of of, of um, November to start the process of the B triple R and therefore submit by the 19th. So the department will submit by the 16th of November. We should be working on our B triple R process from 17th to 19th of November. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Ms. Martinez. Uh, the the honourable Fanskal may move for the adoption of the minutes, and honourable Marshalle uh, seconded that move. Um, any announcement? Sir, be, before the announcement. Yes, honourable Marshalle. Thank you very much uh, uh, for allowing me this opportunity, and it's good that uh, I'm raising this outside the department. Chair, the, the point I was trying to raise earlier, Chair, is that had the, the Bay Bridge border issue being implemented with the right, with the correct height, the correct quality of the fence, uh, with all the legislative, your EAA and all these things correct, you were still going to have a problem that the department have got expert advice that says putting a fence alone is wrong if you don't put technology. Now, the department took advantage of COVID. You see, we must not allow them that today they tell us this, tomorrow they come and contradict themselves. Had they put a fence fit for purpose, it was going to be fit for purpose, but still you're going to have a problem because they have commissioned man of the department did investigations, they know that even if you can put whatever kind of offense, it will be wrong. So we must not allow this thing, Chair, that as and when they feel they want to give us something, they come and give us. 
They can't sit in the offices with information that says putting a fence alone is wrong. And still, because there is COVID, they go and do that. Thanks, Chair, for allowing me to, to raise this issue. Thank you, Honorable Marshalle. Uh, we have noted that, and um, I think it, it has been the basis of what happened wrong there. Uh, you correct. Thank you again, Honorable Marshalle. Uh, I've noted you, and I understand your frustration. We have to ensure that whatever that is being done by the department that we oversighting is fit for purpose and is good. And the reality, we are dealing here with a department that has all previously kinds of corruption. A, a department that in all these years of its existence, it has done things wrongly. I think the way we're dealing with the things as this portfolio committee, ensuring that we are just behind them so that they do what is correct, we are on the right track. You are correct, Honorable Marcelle, again. I think as this committee, we are on the right track in probing everything that they are presenting to us. We must leave no stone unturned in ensuring that the public purse is utilized what is fit for purpose. And when they come to us with information, they must not come to us with just information, just for bringing it to the committee. We must ask these probing questions that Honorable Marcelle is asking. Thank you again, Young Lion. Um, honorable members, I must appreciate again the way our committee has been dealing with the issues ever since we were uh, appointed to this committee 2019. It has been a year. I don't want to lie. It has really been a year. A committee that today had about three media houses listening to it. They were here. They were listening to us. It shows that there's something good that we are doing. So let's not um, sing a pelaman again. Malungu, a committee. Let's work Hard. Let's ensure that South Africa knows what is being done by public works and infrastructure. Let's play our role in ensuring uh, what is good comes out of whatever that is being done by this. We will follow up all this issue of the border fences. Thank you again. Uh, thank you again, Nola. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you, members. Thank you, Chair.